make sure we have audio here. Let's see. All right, so I just opened the new app and I just wanna make sure we have a couple people here already. So let me know if uh, you can hear everything okay and then I'll get started. All right, how's that? Sounds good? All right. So the first thing we need to do is set up the printer for the model we're using. So this is the curved setup screen here, and I'm just going to choose the P800 from the drop-down list, from the printer model drop-down. And today I'm going to be doing uh, a couple of gloss papers, hopefully. So uh, I'm going to start off with um, with a Honolulu Barita. And the default ink limit for a gloss uh, for this printer comes in at about 57. So I'm going to increase that to say like 70 to 75. Uh, I like 72 as a number, so I'll set that there. And you can see as I move this slider back and forth, the inks at the end of the scale go higher or lower. And that is similar to what happens with the QTR boost function if you're using the ink descriptor file. So the first thing we're going to do is save this K3 profile. Um, then we'll come back and save the toning profiles. So uh, with that set, we're going to go to save current starter curve. And in doing this, I'm going to go through the process of setting up a new printer specifically for these curves. So we'll go into quad tone rip profiles folder. And since I'm using the P100, I will um, go to the, the default P800 curves here uh, that come with quad tone rip. There's this P800-UC, you can see this folder here. I'm going to duplicate that folder. That should have, oh, Command-D went to the desktop instead of duplicating. Let's go do that again. P800, I'm gonna right click and duplicate. And change this file name. If I can select this with the, I have the pen tablet here. Uh, I'm going to just hit rename, I guess. We'll do that easier. Um, we'll call this uh, QC um, for quick curve. Uh, I have a few other printers in there renamed. So uh, I'm just going to call this QC and then open that up. Oh, let me back up. Um, let's do this properly. Uh, I kind of jumped in here, saving the curves instead of setting up the printer. So let's go to the finder. I'm gonna make a new window, go to quad tone rip. So go to applications and hit Q to go to quad tone rip. Go to profiles and find the P800. So hit P, hopefully that'll get us to P800. So there's the folder we just created. So let's open that up and I'm going to delete. So this is all the default curves or ink descriptor files that come with quad tone rip. I'm gonna delete all those. And this install command, we need to rename this install command to be the name of the folder we created. So click on that once to get the insertion point and say uh, QC. So kind of important here that we put a dash between the P100 and the QC. If you take that out, it's going to be looking for a printer model named P100 QC. Um, and it's not going to find it. You're going to get an error when you try to install that. So what I'll do now with no curves in here yet, I'll just double click and run the install command. See, it said it's creating the printer named QC. If I mess that up, let's, let's do this. I'll show you what happens when we mess up here. It'll say couldn't find it. Couldn't find a um, PPD file. So that's why you would need to have that little dash in there. So let's put that back. It already installed that, that printer. Uh, so we're set there. Now we can save out our starter curve. Um, so we'll hit save starter curve. There's the folder we need. And we can name this, uh, uh, I have a text expander snippet that expands that. So let's say HHN um, Varita. 
and this is right at FB. And I'll say K3 with the ink limit of 72. Put another dash in there. So you see it already put the dot quad extension on there. Um, so it just saves out this curve here. Now we're going to need a, um, a neutral curve, a cool or selenium curve, and a, uh, a warm tone curve. So we'll come down to this toner setting here and say neutral. And you see it adds the light cyan, the uh, magenta, and the cyan magenta. And you also notice it dropped the ink limit down to 60. So this is why we put the, the K3 first. Uh, as we add these toner inks, the black ink limit drops down to account for the darkening of the, uh, the toner inks. Um, this is actually going to print with too much saturation in these curves here, so we can drop that toner saturation down to, uh, say, 20%. And as you do, so if we could slide this back and forth, you see the, the curves uh, increase and decrease based on that toner ink saturation. Also notice the ink limit, the black ink limit up here goes up. Um, so we'll put it down to like 20%. And in this version, the only way to set that is to move the slider back and forth. So I'll get it to about 20%, and then we'll save this again. Um, so we'll save this. Instead of K3, we'll put um, just NT for neutral. Save that. Um, then let's go back and make a selenium. So you, it's actually increasing quite a lot of ink in there. Um, we can bring this down to half that, let's say 25%. Um, selenium. Say save curve. I'll call this SE for selenium, and we'll do one more for the warm tone. So um, you see, warm adds just a little bit of uh, magenta and yellow. So we'll leave this about there too. It's going to be pretty warm. It's only going to be brown with the gloss paper here. Um, so we'll leave that at 50%. Say save the starter curve and save this as warm. Now we need to print our targets. So I'm going to do all this on just one sheet of paper here. So uh, I have a folder here on the desktop with the step wedges. Um, what I'll do is open up print tool. Let's see what I have in there. So I already have print tool open. We'll go down to the curve. So without anything loaded up yet, go to printer in the top right of the print tool screen, choose our printer that was loaded. Oh, we got to go back. Let's quit print tool for a moment. Um, after saving those curves out, we need to actually install them. So make a new finder window. So just command N to make a new finder window. Go back to applications, quad tone rip, profiles. And from here, we can use date modified to find it. There's our folder there. Let's drag this over so it's a little easier to see. Date modified, there we go. And we'll run that install command again. So you see it installed the three curves. There were no problems. And now we can restart print tool and print with our curves. So there's our printer there. We'll make this a little more compact. We can go to paper and print settings. Choose letter uh, from the default menu. To get to the actual um, print settings, we go to layout and then go down to quantum rip. Change the 16 bit and then curve one. We'll just do the, the K3 first. Change this to unidirectional uh, black ink. I know the Gloss ink is installed here. So let me open up the printer tray and let's see. Settings are okay. Open up the step wedges here and we'll just do a 21 step target. Uh, we could also do a 51 or 128. Uh, to save paper on this first round, since we're making up the toning profiles, we'll do this. I'm gonna keep it about an inch from the top and 
just make sure we're, I'm looking down at the lower left or lower right corner of the print tool window, just like make sure there's no color management and run print. It's going to pop up the window again. I like to confirm this and everything looks okay. And we can print. So while this is printing, if anyone has any questions, um, we can get those answered. Um, and then also while it's printing, what I like to do is just set up for the next run and we can do multiple on this printer, we can do multiple prints on each um, on each paper. So uh, with the image selected in the files little um, table view here, you can click on this, looks like two sheets overlapping each other. You'll get a second version here. I like to just drop it down a little bit. Then select the top one and just hit uh, Command W to get rid of it. And now we're already set up on the page for the next uh, next print. So first row is printing and we can go and set up for the next one. Cancel here. We'll go down just to run print, layout, quad tone rip. And this one will do the neutral. And I'll wait till this is done to print so it doesn't try to grab the next sheet before I can get this sheet back into the printer. So from here, I'm going to actually go and linearize, uh, measure with the i1 profiler and the i1 pro, and then linearize each of these toning curves, and then go back and blend them with the curve blending settings I, I built into the app. You know, to save time here, let's choose bidirectional. And we'll clean up these windows just a touch while we're while we're waiting. So I'll keep this around. Um, again, if you accidentally close this window, the app doesn't quit. You can just hit Command One, and it's going to open up in this weird size. But you can just drag that out. So it'll keep the the settings that were in there last. Um, so I'm going to switch to the camera real quick. There we go. So there it is on the sheet. It's been pre-linearized. So uh, for the the K3s for most gloss papers. Um, so it's going to look pretty correct um, right out of the printer. When you start adding those color inks, you're going to need to have, um, it's going to darken it, even though I have this, um, uh, this, oops, we want to have that as K3. Um, it was at 72. Even though I have this, um, this thing here that drops the ink levels down, um, it's going to, you're going to need to linearize with the color ink. So let's drag that back through, uh, switch back over to the screen here. And um, by directional, we're going to print the neutral one, run print. And then I will set up for the next run. Um, so we'll do the thing where we duplicate the image, drag it down the page a little bit, get that first, that top one, and get rid of it with it. You can use a plus or minus, or the, the minus button here instead of Command W. So go back to, and so you can, while we're waiting here, I'll go through some more of these toner settings. Um, I have the kind of common ones like sl the selenium and the cool. The cool is just a slight more uh, percentage of cyan to magenta, where the selenium is a little more magenta to cyan. Okay, there's the second print with the neutral. Um, now, go back through and let's see, print tool. It's already set up here, run print. And this one we will do the selenium, hit print. Now, if I were doing the profiling for real, I would uh, blow dry between uh, printing each one because sometimes the rollers can grab it. And like, if there's any kind of uh, leftover ink, not leftover, but undried ink, it could lift it off. For this purpose, I'm just gonna kind of run through here. Um, so, Going back to the toning settings here, let me just kind of minimize print tool for a moment, clean up the windows. Um, see, the selenium drops that black ink down kind of a lot because there's so much uh, these color inks in there. Now, if you wanted to make your own toning settings, you can go down to custom and everything even uh, drops back to the original black limit, but you can take these sliders down here and increase, uh, and so you have the, the ink limit for the color inks going up and down 
for each one here. So if you wanted to make your own selenium setting, you could uh, get some magenta to cyan. And this is going to be pretty pink if you wanted more of that eggplant look um, because you have so much cyan or sorry, so much magenta in there. Then from there, you could do the thing where you drop the saturation if you want to dial that in some more. Um, and then let me get this next one set up. So that was the selenium there, and it does kind of overload the ink a little bit. So we'll have to, you'll see that when we're actually measured how much ink is actually being loaded on there. Uh, we've got a print tool. And run this down. Command P to print, and we'll do the warm tone one now. So like I was saying, um, from here you could really dial in the, the toning settings when we do the curve blending. And I'll show you how to use uh, the A and B channels in the, the measurements from the lab channels and really dial in your, uh, your toning settings based on those numbers. Um, so here I'll just minimize that for a moment and get ready to start measuring these. So like I said, I would hair dry these um, if I were doing this for real because the inks will dry down a little bit, start to stabilize over those uh, few minutes that you hair dry them. Um, say open up I1 Profiler. So I'm going to switch over to the camera just one more time to kind of show you what this looks like when, uh, when we're printing. So we've got uh, the four toning curves there, and we'll start to measure these with I1 Profiler, and hopefully this uh, picture in picture thing works here. Um, no, it's not going to. So I'm just going to show the software and not me actually measuring it with the device. So the first thing I'll do is just kind of get this set up on the K3 line first. So I have my little tray here. Um, line up that and we'll switch over to I1 Profiler. Uh, we're, of course, there it is, I found it. Um, Starting up, it wasn't finding the, the software here. So let's switch back over to Alma Profiler. Um, so with this method, you don't need a reference file. We can just go to uh, under profiling. We make sure we're in the advanced mode, uh, not basic. Then you don't have options uh, for profiling. So it just says demo and you get this. So home button, go to advanced. And then we're gonna look under printer and make sure this is RGB printer. And then under workflow selection, go down the third from the bottom is measure chart. Um, sometimes I1 Profiler has a hard time grabbing the I1 Pro. See, I select it and nothing happens. Um, so you can fight this. Um, at one point I had made a, a saved workflow that kind of does it for me. Um, I do have to go back to define the chart. So it already selected that. I'll do a 21 by four measurement. So we're gonna be measuring and averaging um, four samples of for each patch. I'm gonna go next and calibrate. So we're waiting for that. So the red line is selected on that first row. So I'll put the device on the page, kind of line up the angle here and Measure row one. So um, let's see, let me switch to the camera again just so you can see how I'm measuring just for the moment. Um, hopefully it's easy enough to see. I just use, I don't move the down to the next actual print here. I just leave the, the tray on the top row. Measure again. Now let's see what happened here. Made it the Okay, it's not measuring now, of course. Let's, let's try this one more time. There it is. I think I just have too many things going on here on the printer that it's taking a minute, or the computer to, to catch up here. I 
I'll switch over to the software again. Let's try this measure again. Let's see. There we go. Okay, seems to be working a little bit faster now. There we are. So this was the, the K3 curve. So we'll hit down here where it says page data, save. And I have a folder full of measurement data um, for different papers and printers. Uh, for now, I'm just going to save this to the desktop. Um, let's say sample measurement data. And I'll rename this to um, Hanamule, um, right? Uh, FB K3, and I'm going to do an underscore and say 21 by 4, so it's a 21 by 4 target. Um, the other kind of important thing in this save dialog is go to I1 Profiler, CGATS Custom, and save, and you get another little pop up with your options. And um, if you're going to be using the data tool, the QTR data tool, you want to make sure this XYZ is checked. If you only have lab, um, it's going to have a hard time averaging the, those samples. So you want to say X, Y, Z. Um, for other uses, I use the location info. Uh, I don't use that in this workflow, but I do keep it checked and hit OK. Um, so we'll go up and say, so there's our measurement data. Um, it, it's a CGATS file. It's just a bunch of measurements. Um, that's location data. This is the X, Y, Z data, and this is the lab data. So my application will actually go through and find the lab L data. So we don't have to worry about doing anything with this for now. Just close that. Uh, we're going to measure the next row here now. So move the tray down to the neutral curve here. Um, go down to the bottom row on I1 Profiler, and then back up to the top to kind of reset the measurements. Um, and now we can measure row one. So this is the first set of the four samples. Okay, and we'll do the same thing with the saving. Um, you need to go to that folder each time and we'll click that. This is NT. Um, that dash MO has to do with the filter on the device. Um, so it's MO is just the, God, I don't even know what the M stands for measurement. Zero is uh, some standard that's kind of predefined. Uh, M1 is the, the UV cut and I think M3 is polarized. Um, so just make sure all that's the same. Um, now go to the bottom row, back to the top to reset the measurements. And then I'll move the tray down to our third printout here. And we will measure this. So this is the selenium curve. And in the little preview here, you can kind of see it's changing color, going a little bit more pink. But it's hard to see in the actual I1 profiler window. And now save that data. So it always kind of goes back to this I1 profiler, color space, RGB, measurement chart. So I go to recent places and just go to the one that I most recently was saving stuff to. Oh, I made a typo, I didn't. Oh, that's the old data. Um, so NT, we'll change that to SE for selenium. Take off this MO that gets added automatically. Um, the last one for the warm. Move that down here. One more. Okay, so with that all set, we can, oh, we need to save the data. 
So I click on this, I don't even know what the, this is called in the OS, um, but the folder tree here, and I go down to the recent places, find one with all the uh, file names set and just say warm, and then take off the MO and save, save that. Um, now I'll go back to measurement files and I don't like any of this MO stuff. Um, so I have a fun little service here that says clean I1 profile names. And it just goes through and finds whatever files in there and takes that MO off the bottom, off the edge there. Um, that's just an Apple script with Automator that I did and just made it as a service when you kind of drop down uh, with a right click. So services. And I, um, if I can figure it out, uh, I'll dig into the, uh, the Automator file and get this out and make a post on that uh, on the site along with some of the sample material here. Okay, so we're ready to move on to linearizing those fur curves. So I can go down to my app here and we're gonna skip curve blending for now and jump straight to linearization. So uh, we need to get data in here, right? So first thing we need to do is get some measurement data and I'll go to, I just keep using this most recent places, right? So sample measurement files. I'll start with the, the K3 here and open that. So as soon as it opens, it automatically finds the four samples for each patch, averages those. So actually, let me open up the measurement data for one more moment. Um, So it goes through, sees that it's this type of file, finds the lab L data here, all this, and then we'll average this one. It'll find the, the next one, wherever that is. Uh, I don't know, some someplace in there. It'll measure, find the next one, measure it, average it, all that stuff. And then it will interpolate that to 256 points. Um, so we have the red line is that interpolated and smooth measurement. So there's automatically some behind the scenes smoothing going on. Um, the black dots here, it's probably a little hard to see in your little YouTube window, but um, there's these black dots, that's the interpolated measurement data. Um, and the green line that's kind of underneath that is the target data for the linearization. So to get rid of the automatic smoothing, you can drag this to the right and then drag it back to the left. So I'll explain these smoothing windows in a second and then drag that back. So now you see a kind of little bumps in here. Um, smoothing, so it does need just a little bit of data smoothing. Um, you could use data tool for this, and I'll show you that in a moment, or just the built-in settings here. So here, um, this is a moving average. So uh, from the 256 points, it's gonna take 12 of them and average them together and then move down one point and average those 12 um, and do that for all the points along the curve here. Um, so with only 21 steps, um, you can go some, you know, depending on how me messy, messy the data is or how noisy it is, um, you can go through and kind of just see where the line gets a little bit smoother, but still maps pretty close to the original data. Now with 21 steps, um, you won't see much of a change because there are you know, relatively few points to average compared to larger patch sets like 128, um, or 256 steps. Um, so some place in the middle here is kind of fine for these 21 steps. Um, the smoothing two is where you'll have a little bit more of an impact here. So this is a spline smoother. So what it does is it samples, um, actually there's more of a setting here, more of a smoothing here than it is on this side of the curve. Um, so the more to the right it goes, the more it will map to the original data. Um, so with this number of points, um, you know, it's, you're not gonna see much of a, an impact there. So someplace in there, or you can turn it all the way to 98, which is gonna map really close to the original data. Um, so I don't know, we, can, we can just play with it and kind of see what works best. Where you'll really notice it is when you load the quad curve. So uh, instead of other things like where you'd have to open up the quad curve in a text editor, this will actually open it directly from the file. So um, let's find, I have a shortcut there to the profiles. Um, let's see, we'll find date modify. Here's our, 
So we'll do the K3 first because that's the measurement data we loaded. So I'll open that. And so there's the curve. Um, we can turn off the smoothing, kind of see how that looks. Is there any kind of, you know, so there's a little bit of jumpiness in there at the end of the scale. Um, so we'll just add some smoothing. Um, turn it all the way up even. It doesn't, doesn't do much. Um, so there are no big noisy or like blocky, chumpy, choppy areas in there. So this is kind of okay. Um, if you had more curves, um, you could turn them on and off. If there was, if you, like your color curves were distracting, you could turn those off if they were in there. Um, this, don't worry about this little notch at the very end. That's just uh, because the way the curve is flattened at the end of the scale there, it's just showing up as a flat part there. Um, it's not gonna show up in your final print. Um, this manual output, output control, um, you can see how the, the curve goes a little bit above, the measurement goes a little bit above that green line. The green line is a linear lab L. <laughs> uh, fire alarm's going off here, it's gonna be fun. Um, so we can move the actual target up and down. And I might have to cut this off um, if the smoke alarms start going off some more. Um, just the house is not on fire, we're just cooking vegetables. Um, so you see how the, this is a thing with the gloss papers. Um, if you were to print this with a stra straight lab L, the, the mid-tones will appear too dark. Um, because, uh, because it's mapping below where that 50% is, it's actually reading a little bit lower. Um, so what we can do is take this 50% line here and move the, the curve in point to the, out, the output point to a little bit higher. Um, and then kind of looking at the shadows, let's keep that pretty linear. So making that green line directly on the black line. So it's gonna be a little bit lighter in the shadows than what was printed. Let's drag it up just a little bit more. There we go. Um, so that's going to look a little bit better. It's not going to be perfectly linear, um, but it's going to look a little bit more correct based on uh, how how the final print's going to look, and it's going to match your screen a little bit closer. So, with that said, I'm going to leave these endpoint or the the manual curve controls in there um, for each part of the step now the process. Um, so we'll hit save linearized curve and we're gonna put it in the same folder. I'm gonna grab that file name and just put LIN on the end of it. Make sure there's no spaces or else it won't install. Hit save um, and now move on to the next one. So I'll load the data. I'll go back to sample measurement data, find the neutral curve. So this one you see got a lot darker um, compared to the previous one but we're still gonna to map to that green line. So each one's gonna to map to the exactly the same tones uh, in the final print there. So the curve here, or the, the quad curves, we need to load the one for the um, for the neutral one, the one we use to print the, the measurement here. So it loads it in, and as soon as you load that, it automatically linearizes it. Um, so here we'll just hit save linearize data, go down to neutral, put dash LIN on it. And we'll do the same, I'm gonna leave the smoothing, everything the same for each of these files now. Um, we'll load, right, let's do the measurement data first. Um, go to Selenium, this is gonna be a lot darker. See how, because of all that coloring that was added in, it printed a lot darker. Still the target is gonna be the same, the, the output target. Load the Selenium file here. And as soon as you load that, it's automatically linearized, then we can save it. Save it back to the P800 folder. Um, and then the last one is the worm. Uh, so we'll find the measurement data for the worm. Then load the quad file for the worm. Okay, that's all set. Um, just double check the smoothing. I'm looking in the quad curve here to make sure there's no severe bumps. Save that as warm linearized. 
and now we need to install those. So one thing you can do, I'm just gonna make a new finder window, go to quad tone rip, profiles, and there's our folder. You can drag that to your sidebar on the Mac, um, make it a, so it's just easier than going up to applications, quad tone rip, all that stuff each time. Um, and now run the install command. So no problems, it installed all the linearized curves there. And we can close that. And then print a linearization check. So um, what I'm gonna do is just print this, um, the, the linearized neutral and warm again. Um, so I can show you the curve blending and we'll use those measurements as a basis of dialing in that neutral profile. So let me switch the camera on again for a moment. Um, so there was the print here. So I can load in like that. I'm going to flip it around so I know which is the linearized ones and which are the original. So put that back in there. And here we can use a larger target. So why don't I switch back to the software. Um, in the step wedge files, I'll load a 51 step target. Put that in print tool. I'll put it right at the top. And before I, now I guess it was here, wasn't it? Plenty of room. Okay. Um, let's take that away. So there's just a 51 step target. Um, paper and print settings. Quad tone rip. We'll do the 72 lin, um, keep them bi-directional just to save some time, and save, run print. You can use last use settings. Hopefully it won't change so much on you. Okay. Now we'll do the same thing where we duplicate this right underneath and set up to print the neutral one here. I'll wait till that's finished and I'll run this also. So we're going to move on to the curve smoothing here. Um, oh, you just said you can't see the camera. Um, I'm just looking at the comments here. I am switching back and forth between the camera and the software. Um, so hopefully I was just showing you how the, the curve was set up in the, in the camera there. Um, If you have any other comments um, while stuff is printing, like feel free to put them in or any questions, I mean. Um, so there is the linearized K3. Um, and I'll print the neutral ones right here. So that goes, I'll move that away and get set up for the, the blending here. So in the curve blending, we'll go back to profiling software. We're going to jump to curve blending. Now, in here, you have a, uh, a setup for curve one and curve two, and then this kind of box on the top, um, let's say the, the top left here. This line in the middle is just to signify 50% of one and the other. Um, this is just a reference point for the 50% point. So the first thing we'll do is load curve for curve one, and we'll use the Hanmule, or this the linearized version of the K3 only. You put that in there, and it has all of the all the inks just as like they were in the previous screen where we linearized them. Um, set that aside for a moment. Uh, we'll need to load curve two. So if you try to save this, it's going to give you an error, or it won't even let you save it from here. Um, in curve two, we will put in the linearized um, one there. So there's curve two, and you can see show curve one. And blended curve is not going to change because uh, from curve one and two because all these points here are saying 50 or 100% of curve one uh, on this lower left part of the screen. So what we'll do is jump over to show blended curves and um, we're going to measure these targets again and load those up into data tool. 
so we can um, see what the reference points are and adjust these curve points uh, to match. So uh, real quick, I'll just measure this, these 251 step targets. I'm just going to measure once um, and then throw them into the data tool to, to graph out the A and B values. So we'll open up I1 Profiler again one more time. There we go, took a while. So we'll do this again, we'll go to measure chart. Um, I'm gonna double click this. So just that measure 21 by four workflow again, with the previous screen and change this to three by 17, because that's our 51 step target. Um, so you see the structure changes there. We'll go next, calibrate the measurement device. Wait for that to do its thing. Okay, so for the K3 here, we'll measure this row one. Again, it's taking a little while. It's funny. Just too many things going on here on this computer. There we go. Oh. Huh, it took a minute to catch up. I need to go back to row two and measure that again because it did not move the, the tray down. It should overwrite that. There we go. And I'll measure row three. And we need to save that data. So we'll go back to the um, sample measurement data and K3, instead of 21 by four, I'll say 51 by one. And that was just the custom settings. They don't change between each, um, between each measurement or starting the application. So we can just leave that alone and cruise on to the, ne on to the next one. So I moved it down to the neutral target. I have to click to the last row and then the top one to kind of reset the measurements. save this and now we need to open that in print tool um, I'm working on a new version that will have the a and b channels kind of loaded into this curve blending screen so you can load the measurements from a from curve one and curve two and that'll graph out on this other side here uh, so you can actually see this all in one application rather than using uh, Roy's data tool here. Um, let me make just a little bit more of a easier thing there. So we can see a little bit better. So we'll take these two here and these are the two we just made um, and drag them down to data tool. And that will graph those out. So here you can actually see the um, the jitteriness in the thing in the in the curve here. Let's say smoothing one or two, um, just to make that a little easier to see. Um, so the neutral one is still a little bit warm. Um, see, this is, if I'm looking at the, the graph on the left, um, the paper is pretty pink. Uh, and that's the, the green, or sorry, the, uh, the red channel is, um, the red graph line here is where it's positive um, above the zero, it's gonna be red. And if it's below, it's gonna be green. Um, the blue line, if it's below zero, it's going to be blue and above zero is going to be yellow um, in terms of the print tool or print color. Um, 
So this is a paper with a lot of optical brighteners. This is that uh, Brita FB. And I just use this as like a junk kind of, uh, um, you know, test paper for these kinds of things. Um, a lot of new papers are more neutral in the in the very beginning here. So um, uh, let's see, this is, uh, let's see, what's the best way to do this here? Um, let's say we want a more of a warm neutral. Um, what we'll do here is these sliders here. You can see when I drop down into curve two, this black line here is going lower. So this is going to be the graph of how much of one curve to the next you have. Um, so in this case, I don't want um, all this blueness down in this. I'm looking at the the um, data tool graphs here. Um, the lower graph, I don't want all this blue in here. I want more of this kind of warm th through here. So in this case, I'm going to go up to about 80% in the white. So it's going to be 80% of curve one and 20% of curve two. Um, go 60% in the lights and then maybe do 50-50 in the midtones. So at 50% here, we're kind of, um, this is an, a B value of about two. Um, sorry, about zero at 50%, or one, half, something like that. I want to go in to about two to three here. So if you look up at curve one here, 50%, um, there is what's this, there's two fours, so it's about five. Um, about 50 or 50, I guess, is about a good, good spot there. Um, and we'll do 60-40 and 60-40. So 60% of curve one and 40% of curve two. Um, so this is going to be similar to the QTR curve blending, uh, but building it into a single curve. And this way you can have just one thing here. Oh, both audio and video stop. That's great. I'm sorry, people. Um, stream seems okay. If I switch from one, so I'm now on the camera, let's switch back to the screen. It says the stream health is not great. It's not, it's not good. Um, yeah, it seems like it dropped a bit here. Huh. Oh, were you saying that you can't see the camera, meaning you couldn't see the, the screen share? Huh. Man, this is the fun part of using YouTube and free things here. All right, um, let me see what I can do. I'm looking back through the stream health history here. Okay, see, huh, it's like jumping around a bit. Let me. Let me just keep on going and hopefully um, the recording to disk work is working just fine and I'll just be able to upload that rather than this live thing. Hopefully this keep it picks back up. Um, all right, so let me just keep on going here and we'll wrap it up. Um, so you can see the blend of the two curves here. And so there's curve one, curve two, and then the, the blended output. Um, so like I said, this is a little similar to how quad tone rip um, the curve blending works, but with more data points. Um, so if you're doing more of an extreme, uh, now it's, I'm just trying to dial in more neutral, but it would help if I had a paper that wasn't so blue and so pink to begin with. Um, if I had a warmer paper, this would be easier to demonstrate with. So the next time around, uh, I'll, I'll use a different paper and, uh, and demonstrate with that. Um, but for now, this is kind of just giving you an idea of how this works. So uh, with that blend in place, um, we can say save blended curve and we'll do, um, uh, I'll just say warm neutral blend. And then we'll hit save. Now the kind of cool thing here is uh, I'll go back to 
the folder here and there's our blend. So we can open that in Oh, that's there's the blend open that in print tool or i'm sorry in, in curve view or we can open it in a text editor I'll open that in text wrangler so it has the blend points in here kind of built in so it has the curves that it was blended from so there's blend of honey mule um fb of k30 or k72 and then the neutral and then it gives you the blend point. So like 75, 26, or 75, 25, uh, 60, 40, all through to like back to 45, 54, or something like that. But it lists them in here. So um, W is for whites, lights, um, M is midtone, darks, and then blacks. Um, so it has all the header in here. And then this is just notes. So it's built into the file there. So you can dial in blends for yourself for different papers that um, are kind of specific to each, um, you know, kind of bodies of work. You don't have to go through and remember like what the blending settings are in the um, QTR print dialog. So with that blend in place, we can go back to the where the install command is, run that, and see there it is installed. So since that was blended from two linearized curves, the output of that blended should be should be linear. Looking at these graphs here. Um, uh, this is probably a little bumpy and has this bump at the end of the scale here because I didn't hair dry these. Um, otherwise, it would be mapping perfectly to what we would have in the linearization here. So from there, you could actually print a torture test, which I'll just kind of pop mine up here and show you what it's like before I wrap this up. Um, so we've got our print tool and step which files. I have my kind of standard image. So we'll drag that in there. Um, what you can do here is use a 128 step target. So for the final blend, use more data points. So there's the target. And I like to put a 21 step in there um, just to make sure um, I don't have any, any bumps that I'm seeing in the 128 steps are not in the gradients of the 21 step um, it's just like you know modeling with two different uh, data points you can kind of see if there are any problems if it's actually measurement error or if it's uh, actually in the print so uh, and then these these bullseyes will show you any banding uh, really obviously so with all that in place i would say run print um, quad tone rip and change that to the blend so the whole point of using the blend is so you don't have to go from the linearized one here and and uh, let's see the neutral one there and then try to dial these things in um, because you can't really see like what these settings are doing you know what shape of how much of one to the other is being used um, like you can in the curve blending here you can really it's just easier and visual visualize like okay I'm 60% of curve one and 40% of curve two something like that. Um, and then you don't need to remember what these settings are or save a preset for that. You can just dial it in once and, and let it go from there. So uh, I'm going to uh, not print this. Um, don't need to print this for myself. Um, but I would then, if I were doing this for a real paper, I would print this, make sure there's no bumps or anything in here. Uh, measure the 128 steps. See if it does need one last round of linearization. If it does, you would just go to the linearization tab open that measurement data, then open the quad file for the blend, just like that, and linearize, you know, set your final output curve and then save the linearized curve with the blend and then go back to clean up. Uh, we'll wrap up with cleaning up here is <clears throat> I like to only save the, the linearized ones. So I just delete these, but if you delete that, um, and you run the install command, you'll still have the curves in the actual uh, the bin folder here for the printer. So you need to delete these in both places. Uh, so you actually delete all of that. Go back to this um, and run that again. Now if we go to print tool and go to paper and print settings, 
you only have the linearized curves in there. So just remember that if you want to delete any files, you have any curves, you need to delete them from both places where the profiles are in the Quantum Rip application folder, as well as, you know, I showed you from my shortcut here, but um, it's in uh, wherever the operating system is. Uh, it's actually with this one. Um, in library, I'll just drill in a little bit. So library, I hit P for printer, and it should jump closer. Then QTR. And then quad tone. And then with date modified is showing up at the top. Otherwise, you have to you know, find where that is down there. So you have to delete, delete them from both places. So that's going to wrap it up here. Uh, I will go through and edit some of this before posting the... Um, the final version back to YouTube. Um, thanks for sticking with me. I hope the stream got a little bit better. Um, the one you'll see in the archive will be hopefully from the uh, from the recording saved to the desktop here, or you know, to to my um, computer, and we can get a cleaner version than whatever was being broadcast to YouTube. So, all right, thanks very much. Uh, I'm going to do this again um, tomorrow and I'll send another announcement. I'm sorry about this morning where the software was doing its wonkiness. So um, we will try to do this again, maybe um, use a different paper, show you a little bit different curve settings so for the blending and maybe a matte paper. Um, so keep an eye out for the email I'll go out later tonight. And then you'll see in the description for the final edited version on YouTube, uh, some of these sample files here. Um, for the, the step wedge files and some of the sample measurement data. So you can just play with that without um, having to do your measurements all by yourself. So, all right, thanks for everybody. Um, see you next.